The Casey Reynolds Show continues now, exclusively on News Talk 103.7 FM and 750 AM KFQD. All right, welcome back to the Casey Reynolds Radio Show on FM 103.7 KFQD. Joined in studio by Ethan Berkowitz, as always, uh, Friday, uh, last hour of the show for our end of the week wrap-up. We're also joined on the Newsmaker line by Dr. Craig Detweiler. Are you there, sir? I am, I am. Now, you are author of, uh, of Into the Dark, Seeing the Sacred in the Top Films of the 21st Century, and uh, it seems like you probably have about the coolest job I, I may have ever heard of. You, you basically <laughs> watch films and uh, <laughs> sort of look for the, the cool religious or philosophical aspects in them. I mean, how, how the heck did you ever come by that? Uh, I believe I might have written this job description myself. Uh, yes. People kept telling me... You can't do that. That's not a real job. And then I kept doing it until somebody hired me to do it. You realize you're so. inspiring right now an entire uh, an entire generation of high school seniors to <laughs> to try to like uh, major in Xbox because because uh, <laughs> it, it, it kind of worked out for you. Now tell me um, in the the news reports we had. And the, the reason we contacted you was um, you apparently were involved in this process whereby. Uh, the Superman movie, and it, it still astonishes me that there are people that don't get that there are Christian uh, Jesus parallels in Superman. But there, there are those overtones in the in the film, and apparently you were engaged at some level to write um, what like like talking points or some sort of notes for pastors as to how they could incorporate the Superman mythology and this new movie that came out into their sermons. Is that exactly. is that what happened? Yeah, Warner Warner Brothers uh, hired a company uh, called Grace Hill Media that basically helps uh, spread the word among pastors, churches, congregations. Uh, you know, they've worked on campaigns for Les Mis and, and The Blind Side and Book of Eli. Mm -hmm. And so they, they were hired to work on Man of Steel, and they always turned to me to write their study guides. They're like, hey, you got a Ph.D. in this stuff. Come on, doctor. Tell I, us what's going on in I, that movie. I hate you so much. I am so jealous. Right, right now, my <laughs> my producer's eyes are big and red because he's like, "That is what I should have done when I was in high school. I should have applied myself. Then I could be doing that." So, what kind of response have you gotten from uh, from the religious community? Because I could see this going two ways. And t tell me if maybe it went one of these ways or a different way. I could see the religious community well, going. This, yeah. this feels sort of dirty because you're you've got this sort of commercial aspect trying to maybe infiltrate our sermons. Or I could see maybe the, the religious community saying, this is kind of neat because it gives us a pop culture, a fun way to bring some of these Christian themes and to engage the 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 the, the flocks and, and maybe even some of the younger members of the uh, of the, the, the organization in a new and different way. And, and I could see them being excited about it. What, what kind of response have you gotten uh, uh, in doing this? Well, it's been all over the map, as you definitely... Uh definitely outlined, uh, you know, everything from uh, Christianity Today, kind of a blog that was just kind of like, hey, you know, this sh we should boycott. No Christian should see this film. Uh, and then at the same time, I'm getting pastors emailing me on the side. I mean, I've got Catholic priests, I've got youth ministers, uh, you know, uh, camp counselors all saying, hey, how can I get my hands on this study guide? So uh, everything from embrace to outright rejection, which is, uh, you know, I guess that, that kind of works uh, with both Superman and uh, for Jesus, since they both felt a little alienated at times. So, <laughs> kind of fun. <laughs> well, we're working in there now. Just out of curiosity, have you seen the movie? I is it good? Of course. Oh yeah, it's Did fun. It's very fun. It's very big. It's very loud. It's everything you expect from a summer blockbuster. Now, now yeah. I, I, I'm joined uh, with uh, with uh, our, a former uh, House Minority Leader here in Alaska, Ethan Berkowitz. Now, uh, you may uh, just to clarify, Ethan is not a Christian. Ethan Berkowitz may be of of the uh, how would you describe yourself? You're one of the the, the chosen people, frozen chosen, the frozen chosen uh, uh, from Alaska. Now, Ethan, you contend that uh, Superman has some Jewish parallels or overtones. Hit, hit me with that argument. Let's get Craig's response to to whether your analysis is uh, is on. It's it's like Moses uh, shooting down the Nile River, you know, and that's the analogy. He's is that it? That's all you got. <laughs> Well, there's, you know, oh, the baby, the baby in a basket, the baby in a basket, the space pod. Yep. Yeah. And uh, well, the, I think when the when you realize the creators of this of the uh, Superman were Jerry Siegel and uh, Joel Schuster, who were both uh, young Jewish teenagers, you know, uh, creating a, a superhero who's 
whose name is actually Hebrew, right? Cal L is like uh, right. you know Daniel or Gabriel or Ezekiel. You know, it's like a, a name for God, Emmanuel, Cal L, all that. I think you're right on point, Ethan. Not yeah. a stretch whatsoever. I, I, I though you know I much rather my movies be enjoyment than theological, but I don't always have that choice. Now, uh, give me a little bit, because uh, uh, I, 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 I love the, the, the text of your work here, or the subject matter uh, of your work. Uh, in, in terms of, uh, let's start out with just Superman, then uh, maybe we'll, we'll spread it out. In terms of Superman, over the course of its of its different iterations, you had, uh, obviously, the, uh, the the comic book, you had the, the TV show, the movies, you had the 80s movies, and now the, the new iteration. Uh, what, uh, what has, uh, in terms of mythology or religion, uh, can you give me sort of an idea over the course of the Superman mythology how religion is intertwined with it? Well, it's always begun with a father sending his son on a mission to save the Earth. Um, in the original, uh, you know, the Kent family, that a mom who adopted him, her name was actually Mary. Mm-hmm. So oh. his, name, his, his mother's name was so Mary. So they weren't too subtle that about it. A little bit over time. They were not subtle at all. They leaned right into it, and... And the you know fighting for truth and justice, of course, he's always and the American way. Uh, yeah, that's in there. Is it, too. Is it ever weird? Am well, I the, like our, Am I the only kid who ever grew up going? I want a definition of what that means. Truth, justice, and the American way. What does that mean? Because it seems like it was rather ambiguous. <laughs> but but anyway, go ahead. So so uh, how has this uh, portrayed itself as, as Superman as the mythology has developed? Well, now um, you know in the in the latest film they actually have. Uh, him living in obscurity, kind of hiding his identity until he's age 33. So he's so out he in the desert power, wandering. Public. That's it. That's it. Oh, see, I'm doing his little here. teaching, doing good deeds, you know, not uh, too subtle. And it's only when he's pressed into service that he actually sort of reveals himself and, 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 and takes on his position to help save uh, humanity from itself kind of a thing? It's messianic. Exactly. And I don't want to give away too much, but he even reveals that he has some healing power for... Uh, Wait, whoa, 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 uh, whoa! Yes. Are you telling yes. me they cross-pollinated Wolverine and Superman? <laughs> if he has claws, <laughs> I'm walking out of the friggin' movie, I gotta tell you. <laughs> It's a Franken hero <laughs> concept all over again. Messing with our Franken fish he, and now our superheroes. Well, he has he definitely has more body hair than Superman has ever had before early in the film. Uh, uh, he definitely well, he even has some some he has some he has some well he has some some uh, Wolverine kind of beard as well when he's living you know, he's living up in in kind of I don't know if it's Vancouver or Alaska, but he's definitely kind of doing the fisherman thing. Well, Casey, as you know, Casey pointed out, what what razor salmon. what what razor blade is going to cut his beard? Yeah, he has like isn't there like a a Gillette commercial out there where they're using like Superman to promote the 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 razor? And I always I, I wonder myself what razor could possibly cut Superman's hair? That that that's just. That that seems exactly. W- it will weird. be hurt. It will be endangered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have to be a kryptonite razor. And who who wants that? Who wants that scraping across their face? <laughs> uh, and, and so what? What? What is? It? Are there any differences between the current iteration of the Superman movie in terms of of how they cast him uh, with, in sort of maybe some of these religious overtones versus how he was previously um, portrayed? That might tell us a little bit of like how society has progressed and how our views on religion have 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 progressed in the last say fifty sixty years since uh, Superman uh, started coming around. Well, I think a lot of people would maybe think America is quote unquote less religious than it was fifty years ago. But in a sense, I think the films have taken over a bit of that function of providing a little of our belief, a little of our uh, faith, you know, promoting hope comfort, all those kinds of things that kind of used to be the province of, uh, you know, the church and, and the synagogue. Um, you see it in this film where literally uh, Man of Steel goes into church to make a big decision, and he's got this huge stained glass window of Jesus right behind him. So, I mean, the filmmakers are leaning right into it. Just oh, so they, they, they're, they're not even trying to hide it. They're, they're going right all the way through Look, uh, uh, Superman's not only going to be all American; he's going to be all American religious. Him and Jesus are buddies. They're going to be the they're they're going to be the super friends. That's it. That's it. And where where Batman fits in that, I don't know. You know, but uh, see that. But in this case, yeah. That that's a separate yeah. question. Can you hold on to the break? Because I want to move on from Superman. Because you've you've got an entire book on 
on on on the great films of the 21st century and the religious overtones. Can can you stick around? Because I want to. Aside from Superman, I want to get into the some other movies and, and get some of your takes on those as well. Can we do that? Absolutely, Casey. All right, I look we'll, forward to it. We'll be back with Craig Detweiler, uh, a professor at uh, Pepperdine University, who uh, specializes in, uh, it, well, his book is Into the Dark, Seeing the Sacred in the Top Films of the 21st Century, also joined by Ethan Berkowitz. We'll be back on the Casey Reynolds Radio Show on FM 103.7 KFQD.